Hey, y'all. Well, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? New year, new start, <laughs> and lots of work ahead as spring starts trying to peek its head up around. I'm up here on the, uh, what well, used to be the pear orchard, up in the high pasture, and uh, I'm determined to find this fence, and we did. It was looking like that. Just one limb at a time, we're uh, plowing through it. Boy, it sure looks good from down yonder with eye line to the, <laughs> to the fence. Well, we used to roll one deep, Sissy and I did, out here on the place. And she thought she needed some backup, so look at this mess. We got five of them running around on us. But they are, uh, they're in training, and she's a good teacher. A little early, I let them run in the daytime out here, and then they go in the fence yard in the evening. That's where uh, safety is and peace of mind for me to keep them out of that old busy Woden Road over there. But if they thought they'd wander off a little earlier, I saw her take off like a bandit up this hill They're over yonder going toward the woods and she decided they wasn't big enough to do that just yet. So she rounded them up and got them back down here. Well, we're excited about spring. Lots of things happening and uh, all positive. That's a good thing. We're uh, still on track for the elderberry orchard. We've got about half the, the rows laid and the seedlings are coming on with roots and they're about to go in the ground. I'm a little late on putting them in, but they'll be fine. But uh, it'll take a year or two to really come on with it, but uh, I'm excited about it. Wildflower is too. We're gonna do a garden this year for vegetables because you can't live on elderberries. Gotta have some veggies, peas and corn. Won't be quite the scale I did last year. That was a flop. Lord of mercy. I told dad the other day he's using the tiller and uh, we planted, I think, a couple 300 pine trees over the last day or so on his place. And uh, I'm getting sidetracked, but I got to tell it, I got tickled. I was like, Dad, these, you sure we want them this close to the fence? And we had a couple of <clears throat> decisions to make. He just put in a barrier. Uh, I was asking him, I said, well, when they go to cut these, it's going to be a little tricky to get in here. He said, that ain't my problem. <laughs> uh, uh, we wish we'd live forever, but I guess he's right. 60, 70 years from now, he and I probably, either one of us will be here. So maybe it ain't mine either. <laughs> oh, but it was a good time with him today. Yeah. I was telling him on that tiller, <clears throat> of course, y'all remember, those of you who've been around any time, and moved in here in 2018, kind of made a stab at it, and then 2019 really got busy and used that hand plow for some of it. And my, uh, Boys, I don't know if he's second day, but he's real close. Wally Dunks, we lost him in December this year, and it was a hard hit. But he wanted to see me do right, and he gave me a tiller to get after it, and we did. And man, I had some of the prettiest tomatoes and crops that year in 2019, beautiful. 2020, 20, 2020 was okay, and then last year, my cousin brought the tractor out here, we're gonna do it big. Should've stuck to the basics, but we planted and planted and planted, and I think I got a cantaloupe out of the whole deal. Don't even know if I ate any of it. But uh, it's funny. <clears throat> Sometimes the the simple things yield the best results, don't they? That's what I've found. But, uh, anyway, we're gonna do a garden just the same this year, and uh, have enough to eat. I did learn my lesson about tilling up the whole pasture because it washed all of it down yonder, if y'all remember. But I think a year's recovered it and we're going to keep most of the grass out here and just till up what we need like we got good sense well why in the world we ever got to practice just tilling the whole thing up makes no no ecological sense but i guess that's just how we always did it i won't be doing that again I'll tell you that <laughs> took me once i learned that lesson boy these look at these dogs i mean they're just on it you did good sissy we, uh, we got two of them named. Not in a hurry to get rid of them, really. <clears throat> they gotta have the right home, because they're, I think uh, she hooked up with a German Shepherd by the looks of them. But uh, they're gonna be good dogs, but they're gonna need some room. So they got plenty here for now. But the two white ones that look most like her got uh, a boy and a girl. 
little uh, wildflower's granddaughter down south, Miss Shaley. She named the, the girl white one Daisy, and she's smiling at me right there. And the big the big boy is Apollo. And we thought we had him at home, but we uh, the new new mommy to be, I guess, was just understood that it was going to be too big a dog for her situation, so we brought it back. But she had named it Apollo. <clears throat> and I like that name. He's a big old dude. He's gonna be twice as big as Sissy, I'm pretty sure. Like his, like Sissy's first <clears throat> round with Bo. But uh, maybe he got a little. That's uh, that was Sissy's brother. And that was a mess up, and then log truck decided Bo needed to go on down the road, so he did. That's another thing we can go get on that. But life's about work, and we've been doing it. I uh, got into business with my cousin and, and uh, his partner over the last year or so, and it's been a long year. It was a rewarding year. We were doing some construction work in the pool business and talked about it and made the transition, and Wildflower and I took over the pool cleaning side of it as our own, doing well. Never thought I'd be cleaning pools, but I kind of like it. <laughs> Yep, it's pretty therapeutic. I've learned a lot and able to help some folks out. But business is booming and growing. I'm spending half a week up here and half a week down in Georgetown and pools all in between. But uh, ain't a whole lot of money in farming, so we like to farm. So we had to figure out an income source to be able to farm. <laughs> oh man, what's that old saying? If you want to make a million dollars and farming or something like that start with 10 million <laughs> you end up with just a million before it's over with yeah but it's it's rewarding we like it you know life is about hard work <clears throat> oh uh, dad had a passel of kids and they was growing up and he told the oldest one 10 years old that when he turned 12 he's gonna tell them the secret of life uh, that next year and a half two years that kid wore that dad out Tell him that secret of life. Well, the day finally came. Young man turned 12 years old. First thing he wanted to know that morning, he ran in and saw his dad and said, Dad, you told me you are going to give me the secret of life. He said, well, are you ready for it? He said, yeah. He said, come with me. So they took a walk out in the pasture, looking at the sun coming up. He said, son, here's the secret of life. you got to keep it to yourself because your younger brothers and sisters aren't ready for it until they're a little older. Boy, he was ready for it. He said, what is it, Dad? He said, cows don't give milk. He said, that's the secret? He said, yeah, that's the secret. Cows don't give milk. You see, you got to get up at 4 a.m. in the morning, put on your rubber boots and heavy coat if it's cold, which it usually is, walk out through a manure-scattered barn, in the filth, in the cold, and get your milk stool. Tie off her head and hobble her legs, and you gotta work to get that milk. Because cows don't give milk. And that's the thing about life. Life doesn't just give you things. It comes through hard work, perseverance, and dedication. And if you don't understand that, when life doesn't come your way like you want it, you get frustrated. And son, at your age and this generation, you're going to see a lot of folks frustrated because they're expected to be handed to them because they think that cows give milk, but they don't. You have to pull it. That stuck with me when I saw that. It's about right. Simple truths. Like that old minister at the gas station. Boy, we've been having to deal with that. Jordan called me the other night. He's going to get some gas at Walmart, and he gave up. He said, Dad, I think everybody is getting gas tonight. I said, well, I guess you can come back tomorrow. The old minister had been waiting in line about 15 minutes to get his turn at the gas pump. The attendant finally motioned him on up. I said, come on up. He said, sir, I'm sorry. He said, I don't know why, but it seems like everybody waits to the last minute to get ready for a long trip. Minister looked at him and smiled. He said, son, I know exactly what you mean. It's the same thing in my business. 
<laughs> oh man. Well, I had a, uh, a follower or someone that kind of uh, take a liking to the page. They messaged me last November about a project they'd come across. Ironically, it was shared on a Georgetown, Texas page, and I thought that was funny with that coincidence and that connection. But it's a uh, it's a company out of London, and uh, they do little documentaries along the way. And, um, they were having a casting call for little Texas farms that they got hurt last year with the <laughs> with the freeze and all that. I don't know if it was that or what it was, but uh, anyway, they just were looking at little small Texas farms that uh, kind of just work in the land for a documentary. Well, I said, well, what, why not? So sent a little old video and told them a little about the place, told them about the 80 chickens we had and all the garden. Now we ain't got nothing. I got two roosters and four babies coming on, but uh, we're getting there. Got a lot of puppies. Anyway, for whatever reason, we went through a series of emails and a Zoom call or so, and they decided they want to come to this whole farm sometime late March after they get their visas and uh, do a little documentary on it. So we'll see. That means I got a lot of cleaning up to do. I've done it once and twice, and I guess it's that time to do it again. <laughs> but that's kind of cool. This old family farm been been built here since 1908, and family's been on it since 45. A lot of history here. Old space shuttle fell out in that field out yonder. And it's a lot of memories, a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of love here. A lot of love and hard work. So we'll try to tell the story as best we can. And uh, who knows? But that's kind of cool. Maybe my great, great, great grandkids will uh, watch it one day on their virtual headset, who knows what it'll be by that time. <laughs> uh, we got a, another edition coming. I'm Grandpa times two. But, uh, got to got to announce it because she made it public. <clears throat> but my daughter Faith is expecting, and they couldn't be happier. About October or, or November, I think was the due date. Now I'm gonna get in trouble because I should know that. But I think it's actually November. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna shut up because I don't remember. <laughs> it's this fall anyway, and you can bet that we'll. Uh, receive that new one with open arms and lots of love so excited for them as the uh, old family tree keeps branching out don't it it's good stuff well i'm gonna do a quick roll call because i hadn't talked to y'all in a while i almost forgot how to do this i just said well never mind i'll just hit the live button and ramble lord knows i can ramble <laughs> let me scroll back up and do these comments i hope y'all can hear me okay Last few, not too good on this other phone. But there's uh, my buddy Ron May saying, hey, y'all, back at you. Let's see, we got, uh, there's my buddy Brian, Brian Wade, when he's not in Facebook jail. <laughs> That's something that can't even speak your mind anymore. Even just, just practical stuff and get all put in Facebook jail. I guess I'll be next. Get in trouble for rambling. There's Gina Norris. Good to see you too, ma'am. Roy's checking in. Long time no see. Hope everything is okay. God bless. Well, I'll tell you, the winter's a little, a little different around here. You don't really feel like walking out there in that pasture with it bare cold. But it's springtime. Things are happening. This, we're just kind of in a shutdown mode during winter. Just trying to get through it. <clears throat> Not a whole lot of stuff happening. But. Uh, there's lots happening this this year, though. Goodness gracious. So, um, anyway, so I'm sure we'll be on fairly fairly often. Um, Melissa can't wait to plant our garden. I know it. I know it. I'm about to get super busy on that. Thank you, David. Lab Shepherd Mixed Pup. Great mix. Well, thank you for the compliment on these. That's that's all Sissy's doing. Boy, she's a good mama. Uh, my buddy Manuel. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Miss y'all. Let's see, there's Grace Honeycutt, like a breath of fresh air. Well, I don't know about that, but thank you. Thanks for sharing thoughts and wisdom. Well, it's just stuff I think about and means something to me. If it makes you think a little bit, well, that's good for both of us, ain't it? Uh, let's see, there's Andrew. 
from Interlocking, Florida. I didn't forget. Good to see you too, buddy. Good sissy and the pups. That's right. There's my buddy Matt down Waco Way. Hey, buddy. I got your call here a while back. Just uh, got busy, didn't call you back, but I'll have to make that happen. So I'm through Waco about every week now. Business down there and business up here. And I guess I finally got smart. I'm going down there anyway. Might as well get some business going and that'll help me with the with that three letter acronym that IRS business. So all those miles are are deductible now because we're working down there. So that's not a bad thing, is it? Yeah, we got puppies, y'all can tell by the trash in the yard. They love getting into it. There's Debbie, how are you? Viola's checking in. The right cow don't give milk. That's right. <laughs> From Kentucky. There's Maria. How are you out in California? Got to go back to work. There's Aggie. Good to see you. Sanders checking in. There's Gina. Thanks on that. We'll see how that goes. Miss Charlotte Ray's missing the stories. Well, I'll try to get back in the rhythm again. There's Miss Jean Blankenship. Nicole Annis. Hey, how are you down in Katy? Good to see you too. Betty's checking in. Uh, let's see, there's Aggie saying that's awesome news. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, Melinda's saying love to see the walkabouts. Uh, I think I about got everybody. Hey, everybody's saying they love my rambling. Well, <laughs> okay, there's <laughs> there's plenty of that. There's Jay, uh, new grandbaby all the way from Sardis, Mississippi. Thanks for that, congratulations. And there's Ronnie and El Campo. All right. Well, Sissy's doing a little cleaning work this evening. Two of these have got uh, miscolored eyes. One's brown, one's blue. Y'all look at that. Show them your eyes, baby. Okay, you're going to say hello, so tell them hi. And that one, I don't know if you can see it on this camera. We've got a blue eye and a brown eye. How about that? But they're not blind. And this old big nugget here. He's got little eyes like a raccoon. <laughs> Ain't that something, them markings? And we got a new baby goat, but she's over there nursing, so we're not going to disturb her. Prettiest markings I've ever seen on one, little black and white. Old DW still is orange. I'll get out. I come home today, and he done busted out a goat pen again, so I had to fix that. But I think the only thing keeping him around is Wildflower saying he can make pretty babies, so we're going to let him keep going. But if he stops that, he may have to find another pasture. <laughs> no, he's all right. He is all right. All right, well, it's time to get these little ones bedded down where they belong. And I uh, hope y'all have a great evening. Be the light. We'll see you again soon. Say bye. Yeah.